Hello everybody, this is Andy Lopez and you're listening to Don't Panic, It's Organic, May 16th, 2020. We have a lot of stuff going on today, of course. I've tried to bring you as much information as I can shove in here. Um, you can get to my uh, website by going, to, you get to the radio show by going to my website, visiblegardener.com. Click on radio show. It will take you to that page. You'll see live show, click on that. That will take you to uh, the, the station on the top left hand corner. You'll see us say meeting number four. No, that's just join live via Zoom. If you have Zoom, you can do that. If you don't, you have to. You can call the phone number 888-627-6008 or direct lines 323-744-4831. So on today's show. I'm going to be talking to you about some things. First of all, we, you know, I answer your questions, so I have a question and answer. I'm going to be talking to somebody. Of course, you have a question. I'm going to give an answer, okay? And it's all about, it's alive, all about the soil. So that's what the question and answer is going to be about. So somebody sent me a question. I'm going to answer it for you. You know, you can always call me and talk to me on the air. So today we're going to do doing about the soil, growing indoors. We're talking about growing with raised beds, how to use rock bus. Rock bus, rock dust with your vegetable garden. How to use rock dust with growing roses, fruit trees, lawns, and trees. How to use the rock dust, okay? We also have a visit or two from Andy the Eco Cat and a look at Andy having fun at work. That would be me having fun at work. So hang in there. Uh, enjoy the, uh, the show. And I'm going to talk a little bit about bricks. Uh, next show, we're going to be talking about how to use a refractometer, how to do a bricks reading. So, you know, I have a, a cam, I have a live cam on my website, which allows people to see what I'm actually doing at work. And you'll be seeing it here every week. You'll be seeing what I did this week. So this is uh, uh, roses uh, that I take care of. Uh, they all, you know, they, they just bloom like crazy because that's, that's what I do. And it's real easy to do, and I can show it to you also, okay? There's some roses. So here's some video. If you're not watching the video as aspects of it, you're missing the best one of the best parts of the show. Of course, you can just listen to it. You can also watch it on your iPhone and your regular phone. Or of course, on the on the TV, on the computer, you can watch it also. But the video is really a really cool way to see everything that that I'm doing and you know what's what's going on to it. Uh, so let me just go ahead and uh, answer the question about the person that asked. He says, "I." My property is not doing very well. My uh, fruit trees are, are have some type of disease. Uh, the uh, the lawn's not doing well. The roses are not doing well. Uh, what's going on? So um, one of the things that advantages we have nowadays is that you can video. You can send send me a video of what's going on so I can see. And basically, it comes down to it's about the soil. It has to do with the soil. You don't pay attention to the life of the soil. Anything that's growing in the soil will not be doing very well. Okay, so the person has a, has a whole bunch of sprinkler systems, sprinkler heads that shoot water onto the air. He's, he says he's watering a lot more now than ever before. Uh, and what's going on is it's going to get hotter. And it's the soil. So I recommend it to this person. I, I always email it back right away uh, that he has to do with, Rock dust, compost, and mulch. And now, just simply applying those things would take a long time for the soil to compose itself, if you know what I mean. It's going to take a year or two for the soil to start to slowly break down. And in the interim, you're going to have to be adding a little bit of rock dust, a certain amount of, a small amount of compost, and the mulch. Uh, the rock dust can be obtained from any number of places. Uh, nowadays, all you have to do is type rock dust uh, on your on your Google, right? Google rock dust. I might even show up because I have my own rock dust blend. It's called Invisible Gardener's Rock Dust Blend. I blend 14 different types of rock dust along with the microorganisms, mycorrhiza and to endo and ectomycorrhiza to uh, provide a nice blend for you to use. You only need a tiny little bit of amount. Remember, it's called trace minerals. You add too much, it becomes toxic. So you want to add a little bit of rock dust on a regular. So I told this person sprinkle some rock dust on the on on the property, uh, like in the garden. Uh, the person uses mirror. He he buys 
uh, heirloom variety organic vegetables like uh, organic tomato plants, but he uses miracle Grow to fertilize them with. No, no. So if you want to be organic, you have to do 100% totally organic, organic. You cannot mix it to it. The chemical fertilizers destroys the health of the soil. So you want to add a little bit of rock dust to your, underneath your t tomato plants, underneath your roses, underneath your fruit trees. You want to cover that with uh, some live compost. The compost you buy in the store is not really that live with a few exceptions. One of my favorite soils to use now is called Dr. Earth's Planting Mix. It has endo and ectomycorrhiza in it. I would add that with the, your compost. If you can get a, a source, a local source of compost, that's really the best way to do. A local source of compost will, uh, then you can talk to the person that's making it, what are you putting into it, what are you using, you know, all that kind of stuff. And you'll find most of them don't really add rock dust to their compost, which is too bad because that's the ideal way to use it. You want to add some type of animal manure that has the bacteria, right? You want to add, add uh, uh, the rock dust to it. If you have the rock dust and the animal manure together, then you're going to have the the right, uh, you know, the right uh, combination to to take care of your soil. Otherwise, uh, you can't just throw rock dust around and expect it to happen, you know, because nothing there to eat the eat the rock dust. Uh, I like I said, I do a, a, a live cam it shows people what I do in the job. So this is what I was doing. Uh, recently, I do a lot. I, I have a spraying service, so when I do the spraying service, I spray the micro, the a, a blend of the rock dust. It's basically a tea, so it has a super seaweed in it, it has a rock dust in it, and it has some microorganisms in it. So that I, when I spray it, I do foliar spraying. So I learned a long time ago, you can put them on the leaves because that's where it's supposed to be in nature. But I also soak the soil with it, start start to give it the microbes alive again. The first time I spray, everything dies because there's nothing in the soil. But sooner or later, the soil starts to become more and more alive. Okay, so you want to add the you want to add uh, uh, you can get a, yourself a soluble mycorrhizae. Now you can buy them in the stores. Very easy to get. Not the stores, but you can go online like an Amazon. You can get a wide variety of of uh, really nice mycorrhizae products. Next show, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go online and show you uh, how I do some shopping online, so you can see the products. I'm going, to, I'm going to show you uh, the refractometers, how you can buy the refractometers, uh, what type of organic fertilizers you can use. And, it, and I use a wide variety of uh, beneficial microbes. You don't have to be as nutty as I am, but so at least you can get started in the process of rock dust, small amount of rock dust, small amount of compost, and a small amount of mulch. We'll, we'll, and the mulch should be, in a, it depends where you live at. Where I live here, where these folks live, the soil is clay soil, so it's very heavy alkaline. Look, what happens is that they've been watering a lot, the heat and everything. The soil is becoming as hard as, uh, it's called hard pan. It's coming really, really extremely hard. The roots don't have a, a chance to survive down there. They're getting barely alive because they're getting watered. And the guys, of course, he dump chemical fertilizers on their base, and there's some fertilizer sitting there. And there's not a single earthworm in the property other than uh, and his vegetable garden, which he rolled and tilts a lot, and he dumps compost on it. The compost he was dumping at it was coming from the city, which wasn't really compost. It was you're basically biosolids or sewer sludge, which was not very good to use. So uh, that, that's what you have to do, and it's, it's, it's a slow process. So while you're in the process of helping the soil come back, you want to foliar spray. So what I do in my services, I basically tell the owners, you let your gardener mow and blow. Let them keep up with the growth because they don't know what they're doing. They have a faintest idea. I call them fake gardeners, right? <laughs> a real gardener will say, well, let me pay attention to the health of the soil. That's very, very important. That's the key to everything, the health of the soil. So so if you apply the little bit of rock dust and compost and you do an acid mulch, I like using a Sierra Gardenia mix or... The, the Dr. Earth's planting mix, which is also slightly acid, and it has all the really nice ingredients in it, including the endo, endo and ectomycorrhiza. That's the key to it. Look in the back of the of the label. You're going to see tons of, of microorganisms there. It's just wonderful. But that takes a long time for the soil to come back. You may have to, you will have to apply it on a regular basis until the soil starts to break down, until the earthworm population. You want to buy some earthworms. Eggs, so earthworm eggs or earthworms, put them in there. If you put them in now, the earthworms will die. But if you put the earthworms in, once the soil is becoming alive, then the earthworm will continue the process for you. 
You see? Then in the interim, you want to start folding your feet. I like making rainbows. I, call, I have a rainbow too. I'm calling the rainbow man, right? Uh, when I spray, I create rainbows all the time. So that's the reason why I spray on a regular monthly basis to provide the, 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 the plants with the minerals they need, because what I do is I have I make the rock, I make a tea out of the rock dust, right? I also buy a product called C90. You can look it up. C90 has 90 different trace minerals, so you need 90 trace minerals. It's actually more than 90, a little more than 90 trace minerals, but you need to trace minerals. So, and the plants are normally supposed to get to trace minerals from the soil, but if the soil is dead. No, in other words, if it's not functioning. You, they're not going to get the trace minerals. If they don't get the trace minerals, they're going to have one problem or another. It's always a trace mineral deficiency. See, right? So when I spray, I'm spraying them. I'm spraying the trace minerals. The plants will get the trace minerals so that they can absorb right through the leaf. It reduces the stress a little bit. And the more I do it, the better and better they they, they become. The more healthier they become. But still, you got to pay attention to the soil. If you don't do anything to the soil, you just spray. Well, first of all, if a customer says, I don't want to, I don't want to, what I usually tell the people is, um, uh, the, what the gardener should be doing, it should be applying the compost and the mulch. At least they could do that, okay? Yeah, at least you get your garden. And I tell them what to buy because you can't go to the store and buy the junk. Junk in, junk out. You want to get good live compost. If you have a source, if you find a local source. Find somebody who's making it and selling it. That's the type you want. And a lot of times when I would do, uh, when I lived out, you know, if I, if I have the opportunity, I always get to know a farmer who has horses and animals and see what are they doing with their animals manure and I would get them straight from them and make the compost myself. Not everybody can make compost, right? So you have to find somebody who's doing it and if you go to the store, you want to read the ingredients, uh, you want to try to get the compost. There are some compost available on the, on the market nowadays, but mainly you have to find local sources, people who are making it in their neighborhood. I would go to a uh, an organic gardening club. You're going to find lots of people who make compost. They make it really easy, available, and they were happy to sell it to you. They probably even have a source of rock dust that you could use. So it's important to continue with uh, our only organic fertilizers. Okay, so you don't want you want to stop using all the chemical fertilizers. They destroy the soil. There are lots of really good organic fertilizers on the market nowadays with the endo and ectomycorrhiza. Okay, like I said, I love the Dr. Earth's product. I have a wide variety of organic fertilizers with the endo and ectomycorrhiza. <laughs> there, excuse me, there, there are lots of other organic fertilizers on the market that are excellent to use and they have a wide variety of excellent natural products that you can use. Uh, there are some really good places you can go shopping to. What well, I'm going to do next next show, I'm actually going to go online. You're going to see me going online. You're going to see me visiting a bunch of different websites that we can take a look at some of their products. Uh, if it gets too confusing for you in terms of what to buy and what to use, that's why I run a club. Now, my membership normally costs $55 for a lifetime. You get my my uh, $20 book, and then you're paying you're paying uh, for member for the membership. Usually, it's a $35 for the you pay for the book because it's twenty dollars plus shipping and then you the twenty dollars lifetime membership now the membership is free if you want to buy the book you still get the membership free so if you pay twenty dollars for the book which is uh you know my book uh, well here's the thing see you can buy the book from me and you get the membership i would rather you go to amazon and buy the book and come to my website and get the free membership membership is free you don't have to buy anything right now membership normally is twenty dollars for a lifetime but i have it uh, I have it during this crisis. I'm making membership available for free. So take, take, take advantage of that. Go up to the website visiblegardener.com. It's G-A-R-D-E-N-E-R.com, and click on free membership. Just click on the membership pa page. It tells you how to how to follow through with a free membership. If you want to buy the book, there, fine. I would rather you go to Amazon and buy the book from Amazon. There's a link there for the Amazon book. If you go to Amazon, just type Invisible Gardener Books. I have over 21 books up there. You can also get the book in Kindle version if you like using Kindle. Personally, I like to have a nice big printed book that I could use, right? Uh, because you can write on and take notes, all that kind of stuff, you know. 
Uh, again, if you buy it from Amazon, then you go back in about a week or so, do a review. It's very important for me, okay? So uh, once you, you learn how, how to, you, you have to do everything organic 100%. I tell people, look, if you're 99% organic, that 1% will get you every time, okay? And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you with um, how to do uh how to do it 100% organically. I was fortunate, and I never was never using chemicals and switched over. I've always been 100% organic, and everything I do has been 100% organic. Everything from the tree care. I, I'm a natural arborist. You know, I work. I, the way I heal the trees is by healing the soil. Really simple. You, a long time ago, when I started taking care, one lady called me up a long when I first started doing invisible gardener. Was I was still. Uh, before I went to service, I was still a kid. I didn't have the name Invisible Gardener, but I was just, you know, I was just doing gardening for people, and I had like over, a, I, I had a lot of customers, okay? <laughs> and one lady called me, says, I have an ant problem. I went there. The ants were climbing up the tree and literally falling down to her house and coming down from the roof. So I said, there's something wrong with the tree because the ants are climbing the tree it tells me the ants know there's something going on with the tree. The tree is stressed out. See, when the bugs eat the, eat the tree, it's because the, the bugs know something's wrong with the tree and it's time to eat it or anything, or whether it be a vegetable. If you want to do an organic vegetable garden and the tree and, the, and your vegetables are stressed out, the bugs and diseases are going to, are going to get it, okay? And those of you that, that, that are watching the, uh, the video, uh, that is a uh, crepe myrtle. Really beautiful. So here's the equal cat. It's going to talk to you for a little bit, okay? Don't go away. Hi. This is Andy. Just wanted to tell you about something you might find interesting. Yes. Uh, the deep dives of elephant seals. You know, elephant seals in the South Ocean reveal that fresh water from melting Antarctic ice could be slowing down part of the ocean's circulation. Now you remember I talked to you about circulation and how it was important for the Gulf Stream to circulate. And if it didn't circulate, you know what would happen? Do you? Ah. <laughs> The trend could decelerate currents that bring warm water and nutrition to the poles and warm water to the equator. I'll explain to you that in a little bit. Since frigid Antarctic waters are usually too hostile for scientists to conduct measurements, an armada of elephant seals were tagged with tiny instruments that measure temperatures and salinity as they dive deep through the ocean, various ocean letters in search of food. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Data collection between 2011 and 2013 reveal melting glaciers may have diluted salty deep waters enough to weaken part of the global temperature circulation. Well, do you want me to tell you what that means? Hmm, look at that butterfly over there. Wow, where are you guys, where are you guys? Where? Oh, there you are. It means that the salt water is going to become more fresh water, and the fresh water doesn't circulate like the salt water. And so, what it means is that the circulation of the Gulf Course, the Gulf Coast, Gulf Co Course, hmm, the Gulf Stream, yeah, that's it, the Gulf Stream. The circulation of the Gulf Stream will be disrupted. And if there's no circulation of the Gulf Stream, no weather. And then that means it's going to get cold. That's how we get an ice age. So, so. What follows a warming period? 
an ice age. Well, more on this later. So thank you very much for tuning in. We'll be back. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Talk to you a little bit about growing indoors. Now, growing indoors is really very easy. A lot of people grow pot indoors. So, if they can grow a pot indoors, you can grow your vegetables indoors. And you just need to a, a, a set aside a room big enough because if you don't have any space outside, you know, you can grow vegetables indoors. You can grow them on your porch. Uh, if you're growing indoors, you're going to have to provide the right type of lighting. Now, there are many different types of lighting situations you can do. You don't have to go with the big expensive lights. Nowadays you can have LED lights. LED lights are very cheap in electricity and they provide all the, the proper lighting that you need. Uh, one of the things I'm going to do next uh, next week is I'm going to go online and show you some of the uh, LED lights available on the market today. They have some grow kits already all set up for you to grow, right? But the, you know, you're not going to be able to grow a lot with these grow kits. They're kind of small. So I would get the e lights. So first, uh, I would uh, LED lights. So first thing I would do is get the space. If you have a basement, if you have a garage, a garage is excellent because then you can uh, put some plastic on the floor so you don't get it all dirty and everything. You have your container right. Uh, you can have uh, you know you don't have to do a giant raised bed. You can grow in containers, and you can set up one or two e LED lights. Uh, they'll provide the lights. You put set it on a timer right. And you're going to have to do some hand watering. There are lots of different ways you can automate the watering, you know. And then you can grow your, your vegetables in it, right? You can grow tomato plants. Uh, uh, you can uh, grow all kinds of vegetables indoors uh, because once you get the lighting down, then the uh, it makes it really, really easy to grow. You can grow like year-round uh, vegetables, especially if you live up north where it gets cold. And uh, nowadays, you know, when... Uh, with the, the virus going on, uh, people want to do their own garden. So if you don't have any space outside, right? If you don't have you don't have the space. Uh, grow it indoors. Uh, another thing you can really grow really easy is sprouts. So you, if you never had experience with growing sprouts, really amazing, easy, simple way to grow uh, sprouts. You don't need the lights to do it, but you can have the uh, the sprouts right there with the vegetables uh, growing. So. Next week, I'm going to actually uh, take you online, and I'm going to show you some of the uh, LED lights that are available that you can buy to grow your vegetables with, right? Now, the other thing I'm going to talk to you about is grow, how to grow in a raised bed. That's assuming you have the space outside to grow in a raised bed. You don't. I don't think you want to do a raised bed indoors. It's kind of big. <laughs> you know, I've, I've never really done a raised bed indoor. You might be able, it depends. If you don't have the space outside, you have a big garage space or something like that, you could do that. But then you have to provide the drainage. Doing a raised bed without drainage is not a good idea. See, so <laughs> that's another thing. I did a raised bed on the roof and I had it uh, up on a, on, on a pallet and the drainage got caught and I had a metal plate on the bottom and drainage ran off to the one side and, and into a container. And I was able to reuse it, but generally I wouldn't do a raised bed indoors. You want to do a raised bed outside. And then what I'll do next week also we're going to do is I'm going to show you some uh, of the raised beds that I have built outside. I'll go over that a little bit, how to make a raised bed, you know, what to put into it. Uh, it's really not that difficult to do a raised bed. You're going to find that uh, you can grow five to seven times more in a raised bed. You can control your uh, environment. You can control the soil. Uh, I do. Uh, I, you can do either soil rotation or you can do crop rotation. Soil rotation is exactly what it says. You take the soil out 
You compost it, you put it back in again. <laughs> uh, crop rotation is exactly what it says. Every every season you grow a different, you know, you, you rotate what you grow in there rather than grow the same thing over and over again. Right? And so that, so uh, so next week I'm going to go over with you how to do, uh, I want, you know, the, the, the building of the raised beds. I have a whole bunch of videos that I've done on, on raised beds. So I'm going to show you some of those. Uh, talk to you about the wood. You don't want to use pressure treated wood, so you, you want to be able to treat the wood uh, organically so it doesn't go bad. How to how to do the watering system, right? And then I'll probably even talk to you a little bit about sources of organic heirloom vegetables that you want to get, right? Because it's important. Here's a here's a video of a raised bed that I made out of rocks. So you can make the raised bed out, out of almost anything, whether it be wood, logs. Uh, there's one here made out of wood that you can see there if you're looking at the video it's a raised bed made out of wood uh, and i don't treat the wood uh, i have a unique way of treating the wood and i'll go over that with you uh too so you can see how to treat the wood uh, i have a variety of customers that i go to their places and i take care of their property like i said it's an avocado, uh, that's an avocado tree if you're looking at the video and of course i use the rock dust the rock dust blend is a very important uh, process and I use a wide variety of uh, uh, sources of rock dust. Uh, soft rock phosphate is another source of rock dust that provides the phosphorus. Phosphorus is very very important for a plant. Uh, people think that that's a source of that's a, a compost that I use, a very live compost. I have a great uh, local source of compost. Uh, then there are many different sources like I use uh, 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 this is called biochar, wonderful source of uh, carbon because you need carbon. Remember I talked to you about last week about how the microorganisms use carbon to form carbonic acid, to, to break down the trace minerals. I have a great spraying rig. I'm happy to, one of my shows is how, to, how it's going to be, is how to start your own organic spraying service. Uh, not too many people are doing this, okay? I don't know of anybody else doing organic spraying service. If you're out there doing organic spraying service, please give me a call. I'd like to talk to you and help you out and make sure you succeed, okay? Uh, so um, I'll be doing that next next week. Uh, so it, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about rock dust in your, uh, in your garden. And you, as you can, if you look at the video, you'll see the source of rock dust. So basically, I sprinkle the rock dust down. You want to put it down, turn it over if you can into the soil a little bit. You want to then add some compost on top of that, a nice layer of compost, and then a layer of mulch. Uh, the mulch will protect the compost from the sun. If you just put compost down, and, and the sun will bake it, and the compost will die. Remember, the compost is a living, has living organisms inside that you have to take care of. Right, and that's why the that's as if you remember if you were here last show I tell you why do you compost you compost because you want to heal the soil, the benefits of course uh, besides healing the soil is that you get to do some recycling right, but that's why we do we compost we want to imitate Mother Nature, we want we want to do what uh, make compost the way she makes compost, see. And so you want to get a good live source of compost. You want to do that on your roses. You want to do that on your lawn. You want to do it on your fruit, fruit trees. You want to do it on your trees. You want to do it on the whole property. Once or twice a year, you should, you should rock dust the whole property, apply a thin layer of, of compost everywhere, and another layer of the mulch. Because it all disappears. It goes into the ground. It disappears. And then you want to get into some type of foliar spraying at, process whether you know whether you do you, you're not going to be able to do it like I do and get a machine but there are different type ways that you can do your foliar spraying and that's one it's going to be another show I'll show you all the different methods that you can use you can get a fertigation unit a fertigation unit it's exactly what it says it, it's a unit that it's an irrigation unit supplies water but also fertilizers and of course, it's been done for it's used for chemical people uh, to fertilize uh, to while they're water. But because you're organic, you can use organic products in there just as well. It hooks into your sprinkler system or it hooks into your bib, you know, your hose bibs. And when you the water comes out, it siphons out the the natural product and mixes it in with the water. It's perfect to make uh, for compost tea, for example. And it's perfect. Like my, my I have a product called Super Seaweed, which is what I spray. You can add super seaweed to the fertigation unit, siphons it right out into the water. You can do your, your, my favorite mixture, coffee, cream, and sugar. 
coffee, cream, and sugar. Coffee is acidic. And also, if it's organic coffee, it will be rich in iron and minerals. Cream, main thing, two things that it has cream is it has uh, calcium, right? Take your, drink your milk for your calcium, and it has natural bacteria. Remember when milk goes bad? Well, that's the natural bacteria that you want to be applying also. One of the things that you'll learn is that all, all animals have different types of bacteria in their stomach, and they're very useful for making compost. You're not making compost if you don't have any type of animal manure in your compost. People say, I don't want animal manure. I'm a Buddhist. I'm not gonna, I don't want any animal products. Well, animal manure is, doesn't hurt the animal at all to use their manure, and that's what Mother Nature does. Mother makes, Nature makes compost by using animal animals. Animals eat the products, and they poop it, and, they, and, and in, in their poop, you have this mineral, minerally rich, bacterially rich, microbially rich product which goes back into the soil and mother nature takes it and uses it the soil will use it so you want to learn how to use rock dust it's very important you want to learn how to use uh, a foliar spray you want to be able to learn how to spray uh, as an arborist I needed a sprayer that can spray up to the top of the tree so that's what this machine does and I will go over with you the machine if you want to do your own spraying service this is the time to do it because you can go out there, you can spray lawns, you can spray roses, you can spray fruit trees. Uh, don't You're not doing a car wash, you don't want to be spraying people's cars and people and dogs and stuff. But because it's totally safe, it's not going to hurt anybody. It's not going to hurt a fly. It's not meant to kill. This The spraying is meant to, to bring life back to the soil. So it doesn't kill the birds, it won't kill the bees. You want to learn how to use it, right? And that's the key to it. So by spraying onto the plants, they start to get the trace minerals right away. Foliar feeding, they absorb the minerals right away. And if they're weak and they're stressed out, you have to give them time to recover. That's, that's, that's what the whole process is. is. It's a slow process because Mother Nature works slow, slowly, right? So you want to learn how to do these things. Uh, again, that's what I'm here for. That's why membership. So right now, membership is free. I put a lid on the cost. It won't cost you a penny to join. You'll get my newsletter. You'll get uh, my podcast. You'll be able to get the show regularly. Uh, go up to my website, invisiblegardener.com. You can join after the show, right? And then you, you'll you find that I also have a, a, a YouTube page, which covers uh, uh, the videos, the show right now. You can see the shows, you know, uh, and then I... Uh, Please subscribe to my YouTube page. That way you'll get this, this show in a video format because you're missing out on a very important thing if you're just listening to it because you can actually see me at work. You can see what I'm doing. You can see what's going on. You can understand it better. So I've been, I go to people's farms. I make the whole property totally gorgeous and organic. And it takes a little while. It's not going to happen like overnight. It's not going to happen in a month. You like, Look, I've been in places for, well, some places I've been there for 10 years. Every year it gets better and better and better. And my biggest weakness is the gardener because they tend to overwater. Sometimes I catch them bringing some chemical fertilizer. What are you doing? We got to feed it. No, it's being fed already. Just leave it alone. All you got to do is mow and blow and cut and keep keep it pruned right. Okay. And so that's that's the whole key to everything. And that's one of the things I try to express to you and show to you, show you how I do it, how I've been doing it for a long, long time. I've been doing this since the sixth grade, okay? And I had a little spraying rig. I, I, I had a, it's, what I used was a siphon unit, a little brass unit that you can hook up to your bib and you have a little line that runs into a bucket. You put your stuff in a bucket and it siphons it right out. That's useful too. There are lots of different ways that you can do. Look, I used to get a miracle Grow sprayers throw the miracle grow away because it's toxic and use their no clog sprayer and it's true it's no clog i could put milk in there i could put my compost tea in there right lots of different ways that you can get become a nice full you know do foliar spraying you also get a three gallon unit that you can pump up as you can spray right um, i i got a bigger spraying unit because i want to be able and i have a massively long hose and the unit that i got is special for arborists has a very high high pressure it could, this is a 100-gallon units here. You don't need the 100-gallon unit. It's a 25-gallon unit you can get. Really, very nice. So if you have any property, it'd be to your advantage to get a little spraying rig together, right? You can put it in the back of the little ATM. Or like a 25-gallon unit is not very much, not very heavy to drag around. They have wheels and everything, right? 
you get a 50 gallon unit which works just as well good you know I got the 100 gallon unit so it makes me makes it easier for me to to spray a big giant place right so the, the key here is getting the soil it takes a it's a long term and a short term solution right the long term solution is the health of the soil that's going to take you some time to get that together you know and it, it, it's to your advantage to actually do a um, a soil test if you do a, a soil test you'll find what's in the soil what rather what's not in the soil it'll tell you the pH of the soil uh, it'll, it'll tell you the, the microorganisms in the soil. It'll tell you the minerals that are not in the soil or the minerals you do have in the soil, whether it's toxic or not. I, I, do, a, I do all those lab testing. You just go up to my website. You click on services. You'll see lab testing. Uh, and you can get started that way. They have various different prices depending upon what type of test you do. There's a very basic test, very inexpensive. That will just give you the pH of the soil. It'll tell you what... what um, some of you know some of your basic elements that you have in there. Uh, of course, it'll tell you what you're missing. Uh, if you want to know what's alive in the soil, then you want to be able to um, uh, get a more advanced test. If you ha if you have a disease, if your soil, if your plants are diseased, and yeah, all diseases start in the soil. So you want to uh, test the soil for diseases, Phytophthora and such like that. So once you get diseases in the soil, you know your soil is in bad shape. And you have to start paying attention to the health of the soil. That's how you deal with diseases. You heal the soil of the disease, and it will heal the plant of the disease. Okay? It's as simple as that. You can't heal the plant of the disease and still have the disease in the soil. It's just not going to work because the soil will infect the plant again. The plant can't get up and walk away. It's stuck there. Understand? Right? You see what I'm saying? So that's, uh, so th that's what I learned a long time ago, and that's one of the things I'm trying to to pass on to you all uh, how to heal the soil that's what it's really all about it's healing the health of the soil so that's why I spray every month which is very minimum but it does work and some people say I want you to spray every few months well it's, it take your lifetime for the soil to come back to shape to life and so uh, uh, I'm going to uh, I'm going to uh, uh, stop talking for a moment I'm going to bring Andy EcoCat back up again um, that's something I've done. I started doing Equal Cat. I have Equal Dog, a bunch of other things. I think uh, the kids like it, so if you have kids, let them watch it. Uh, if you're a kid yourself in heart, uh, this is a good way to pay attention to it. I, I thought maybe I'd get your attention by being a cat, right? So I'm going to go ahead and um, stop it in a second and, and, and continue, let the Equal Andy Equal Cat come online and talk to you. I don't know what he's going to be talking about. He's going to be on every every show whether it be Andy Equal Cat or Andy Equal Dog or any of my other little creatures that I have uh, developed just for you. And so I'm here every week, you know, to help you help you do this. Uh, join my club. Go to MissableGardener.com. Sign up. is free. Pretty soon I'm going to go back to the membership, which is $20 a lifetime or $55 for you get the book uh, shipped to you, right? So here's, here's a, this is a, a video of me on a farm. Uh, with fruit trees and stuff, it took a. I was there for about ten years until the fires came, and then uh, the uh, the new people said, "I'm out of here. It's, can't hand, can't deal with this kind of fire." So the 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 new owners don't even know about about me, and it's disappointing because you get to you know you love these trees and you take care of them, and then it's it's gone, right? That's the way it's gone. That's the way it works. That's the, that's what happens. Uh, so I'm here every week for you, man. And like I said, you can always feel free to call me. If, if you have an urge to talk to me right now, you just call the number I told you before. I stopped this, and the engineer will say, Andy, you have a call, and I'll start talking to you, because that's what I want to do. I want to talk to you. If you're shy, you can email me, Andy Lopez at invisiblegardener.com, and I will go over it. I never tell you, I never embarrass you by giving your name or phone number or any of that stuff. You know, I just want to be able to help you, right? Okay, right, you understand? So it's, it's invisiblegardener.com. Make sure you spell it right because many people say you can't find your website. And it's Gardner. It's I-N-V-I-S-I-B-L-E-G-A-R-D-E-N-E-R.com. Invisiblegardener.com. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this for a second and let you listen to Andy EcoCat. Okay?
test to do do la la di di la la di 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 <sighs> are we ready everybody okay so hi everybody this is andy lopez uh germany's bearish has bought monsanto for 57 million it's 50 excuse me 57 billion yeah <laughs> Bear, the science for a better life, folks, better known for the bear aspirin, Alka-Seltzer, and other pharmaceutical products, also happens to be one of the largest suppliers of pesticides. Their, their merger is stated as followed by Monsanto Chairman Hugh Grant. We believe that this combination best positions us to deliver a wide set of solutions to meet growers' needs on a truly global scale regardless of their size. <coughs> I think what they're saying, what he's saying there is that it's a good time for us to get in on this uh, uh, Monsanto thing that they got going here with, uh, you know, Roundup. We should get our chemicals in there, too. Uh, companies are looking for ways to grab larger shells, shares of the emerging fields of proprietary genetic engineering seeds. They say these seeds will be genetically engineered to withstand crop protection, to withstand crop protecting chemicals. Chemicals that protect plants against insects, diseases, and whatever attacks the plants. What this means to us is the reality that bears pesticides will end up in various seeds from foods to animal products. If you think Roundup is bad, then wait till you see many of bears pesticides in our food and in our flowers and trees and lawns. This is only the beginning since Monsanto got away with adding Roundup and other pesticides and have pushed through Congress laws to protect them that they can now do the same to any chemicals they choose. So the merger makes sense, right? One of the world's largest pest control companies and Monsanto, gee, you wonder what Monsanto is going to do with all that information, huh? They're going to be producing all kinds of pesticides in, in, the f in genes in the assortment of food, you'll see. They will, of course, say that it's all safe and it has been thoroughly researched and again proven safe. They would say that science is behind them in this and that we are all crazy. Like me, look at me. I'm crazy, right? I'm crazy, yeah. <laughs> I'm crazy, 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 crazy. Yeah. <laughs> if they had their way, it would have ended up certified organic products. It, already, it is already found in natural products. After all, how natural are seeds? I would also like to point out that they like to refer to studies done on GMO seeds. Recently, it was found that Big Sugar, many years ago, funded a study which said it's not the sugar that is bad, but the fats that are bad. It's besides the point that they paid and told the folks they did, that did the studies what to find. Scientists are just recently realizing this was wrong and that it's indeed sugar that is bad especially GEO high fructose and the super duper high fructose type is also bad. I mean, they knew that you wouldn't go for it if they called it a super duper high fructose sugar, right? Make a long story short, you all know what Monsanto does. And Bayer, well, you know, Bayer aspirin, Alka-Seltzer, those things. But they're also one of the world's largest producer of pesticides. So you can bet that you will be seeing more pesticides in the genes of Monsanto's products. So you need to do something about it, and you do something about it now. There are a lot, there's a form you can fill out to uh, help uh, block the merger. So thank you very much for listening to my show, and uh, t stay tuned for more to come. So this video is brought to you by Invisible Gardener Studios. So enjoy the show, a little bit about rock dust and how I use it, okay? Uh, I shoot a lot of videos. I have over 900 videos already. So uh, here we go. Hi, so today we're at a different property. Uh, and I've been coming here for maybe 10 years now. Uh, you can follow the history of it on my website. Uh, and what we're doing this time of year to all the places, we're remineralizing. It's called remineralization. So just throwing rock dust around is not going to work. Many reasons for that. But, so you have to understand why we throw rock dust down in the first place. 
So you, you, you think rocks and minerals, okay? So you understand rock dust is the source of minerals. But when we put it in the soil, we're actually feeding the rock dust through the soil. So it's important that you not only have the minerals, but you have that microbial life there to eat it. Because that's, that's what we're doing. We're giving the minerals to the, the rock dust to the microbial life. So it takes a while to establish a, the microbial life on the property. When I first go to a place, like on the farm, I can spray and apply the microbials. 99% of them will die. There'll be little dead bodies everywhere. You see one microbial burying everybody. The little cemetery, microbial cemetery, they all die. 99% of them. That 1% will survive. Next time I come around and do it, maybe another percent will survive. After a while, you have 100% survive, even though that doesn't happen anymore. The reason why is man, humankind, are very destructive. They do massive amounts of damage to the soil. So whether it's city water that has some junk in it that kills the bacteria in the soil, all kinds of toxins, chemical fertilizers by nature are toxic. They kill the natural bacteria in the soil. Cocaine for the soil is a chemical fertilizer. And if you go use organic fertilizer on a dead soil, it won't work. The organic fertilizers only work if the soil is alive. A lot of people say, oh, the organic fertilizer doesn't work. I switched over from miracle Grow to organic fertilizer. It doesn't work. Of course not. The microbial life is not there. Sure right here. Over here. Make sure right here. You can take a close look. You're going to see a wide variety of things in here. And this is something I've developed over the years to apply, and, it, and it's different throughout the year, too. So at this time of year, I have soft rock phosphate in there. I have gypsum in there. I have an organic fertilizer in there. Two different types of organic fertilizer, maybe even three different types of organic fertilizer in here. Uh, and there's... Uh, a variety of uh, soft, uh, a rock, I mean, rock dust, which in, is in a powdered form. So I put a uh, pe pelletized form, which takes them a little bit longer to break down, maybe a month or two or three months. This piece will be eventually broken down. And then I have the powder and the powdered form, very, very, very fine, which is broken down right away when the water hits it. And then on top of that, one of the things I sprayed, the main thing, the super seaweed, is a microbiological activator. That gets sprayed all the time. That's the liquid microbe in a liquid form with the minerals and everything right away because the plants absorb that. So you're doing two things at the same time. When we spray a plant, they absorb the minerals and the microbe. In nature, in a, in a forest, the microbes are in the air. The microbes are on the leaves. They're everywhere. That rhymes. Okay, so that's what we're going to do today. Fly by. From now on, everywhere we go, we're going to have my special drone flyer, drone uh, pilot, take us up to get a view of everything. Uh, these are uh, sycamores, and uh, want to keep an, you know you want to see what's going on, what we're doing. Just this is the website, invisiblegardener.com. You can subscribe to get the newsletter. Come a member if you need help. Uh, have my book. Lots of good stuff. Thank you very much for listening. We'll be back. So as I said before, I I do a variety of different things. I run invisiblegardener.com. Uh, Visible Gardener is a, uh, I'm an organic arborist. I have a, my new book is called Don't Panic, It's Organic. Please buy it from Amazon. That way you can do a book review. Uh, you don't, and the membership is free. You just come to my website. Membership is currently free. Uh, normally I would charge for membership. Right now it's free. But the book, there's a color version and a black and white version. You can get the color version only from me. It's $55 just for the color version of all by itself. The black and white version uh, it's 20 bucks you can get from Amazon. You can go, of course, get it from me. I have no problem with that. But then you can't do a review on Amazon. So if you buy it from me and you like the book, buy another book from Amazon and give it to a friend. And then you could do a book review, right? And I'm, uh, so I run a club. I'm, I'm available to help you. Uh, members can access me through uh, the members only section. We have an organic hotline that members can call. Uh, if you're having a problem with the drought, uh, with the fire, with your vegetable garden, right? Uh, that's what I'm here for. Uh, we have an organic hotline. The members call me between 5 and, and 9. Don't call me at 9. People call at 9. I want to talk to you. Sorry, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> so try to call me at 8.30 or at least at least a little bit uh, 8 o'clock-ish so that it allows me to talk to you, right? Because, you know, at 9 o'clock, I'm done. And so uh, I'm, I'm, uh, I run a club. 
I've been doing it since 1970, right? It's 1970 uh, I've been running this club. Uh, I've got world, worldwide members. Uh, I, I do uh, a, variety, a variety of different uh, uh, programs from biodynamics to permaculture, you name it. I've been, I've been practicing them. I've pretty much developed my online. We have online classes. What you're listening to right now is an online class. This is what, how, it's, how it's developed. That's why I do my radio show. The radio show is all about. So I'm here every Saturday between 1 and 2 p.m. Right after the show, by the way, my cosmic cosmic, my cosmic spaceship is coming up. Uh, so you just have to get at it. You can get at it in a number, lot of different ways. But if you went to my website, visiblegardener.com, you click on radio show, you'll see cosmic spaceship button there. Or if you're on the, if you're on the, uh, on the, uh, the station, the bbsradio.com, uh, you know, it's just if you look on the top, it says bbsradio.com forward slash don't panic, it's organic. Where you can just delete that don't panic, it's organic and put cosmic spaceship, takes you right to there. Um, you also do a little search on, on their website, it brings up cosmic spaceship. Uh, that's coming up, and, and right after this show, I do artwork and I do my uh, music, it's up there for you. I tell people, heal the earth and you heal yourself. It's one of my slogans, right? So let me help you with the rock toss. Let me help you with your tree care. Let me help you with your vegetable garden. You're not if you, 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 you if you're not lucky to have me nearby you. If you're lucky to have me nearby, I'm happy to do a house call. Uh, remember, I said membership. Digital membership is normally twenty dollars. That's free now. Membership is free. You know it won't cost you a penny, right? So uh, that's that's what I've, I've been doing for a long time. I love doing this. I love talking to people. Uh, you, feel, you should feel free to give me a call. Because that's what I'm here for on the radio show. In the beginning of every show, I will give you uh, information on how to call. If you look, if you're watching the video, you'll see that I restore, I restore the life of your soul. Everything that I do is amazing, absolutely amazing. The plants, the vegetables. Talk about dense fruit, right? Dense vegetables. That's that's trace minerals. You put, they're not going to get the trace minerals if you don't put it in the trace minerals. It's called soil deple depletion. You gotta have the trace minerals in there, but you gotta have the bacteria that eat it, right? I tell people for a magical garden. That's how, what happens. You have a truly magical garden, right? Look at that. If you if you look at the visual, you'll see it's a truly magical garden, okay? And I developed the the don't panic is organic. It's my trademark. It's my copyright, okay? Uh, so I I use that. I don't. I would have become wealthy if I had started a t-shirt business, right? Uh, this is like my business card, so I have a little video of a business card that tells you what I do. I've been in business since 1972, actually 1970, but I didn't, I, uh, uh, I didn't, uh, I didn't start Invisible Gardener until 1972. I've been doing my business in the sixth grade, and when I got out of service in 1970, started doing stuff for people. That's how I got the name Invisible Gardener. I did a garden once at night. Best time to work is at night under the light of the full moon. And uh, I did a garden, a, a customer hired me, a husband hired me once, and I, I work at, at midnight, I'm on, you know, from 10, on, 10 o'clock on. So by, by the morning, the, best, the race best was all done, and I filled it with vegetables, and I guess the name Invisible Gardener stuck. And so that's what I've been doing ever since, and I can help you too. It's really very simple, but you have to get off the mindset of using chemicals. Chemical fertilizers, chemical pesticides, very, very bad. I do house call. If you're lucky enough to be in my area here, and I do some traveling, so it doesn't have to be right here in Malibu. I go to Montecito. I go to Ojai. I go to Santa Barbara. Uh, I'm all over Ventura. I'm all over Santa Monica, right? I even go down to San Diego, right? Uh, so I'm happy to travel for you. Uh, and, uh, of course, my book, please pick up my book. Go Amazon.com, type in Invisible Gardener book. You'll see all my, I have 21 books up there. And I do the lab test. I do the basic biology package. I, do, I test for diseases. I test your compost. I test for mycorrhiza. I don't test. I send it to a lab. I work out with a great folks at a lab. I specialize in remineralization. That's what it's all about. Remineralization. I'll talk. I'll have the remineralization.org forks dot org. That's what. It, that's where you find out more about rock touch. You go to remineralization.org, right? And they'll t they'll they 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 have a wide variety of, of sources. They even tell you different places you can get rock dust from. That's what it's all about with those folks. Uh, Joanne Campy. Tell them I said hi. Uh, I'm going to have her on the show again uh, sometime soon. 
And then I'm also going to have the lab test folks come on soon. I'm having a wide variety of guests going to be showing up. Uh, so if you have an organic product or organic service, or you're or you're a doctor and you're and you, and you want to talk about uh, the soil, because you know I talk about a lot about I have another show called the Body in the Garden. You no, know, see the body, uh, the doctor in the garden, or the body. I uh, see what's the name of the show? No, I forgot now. I think it's called the Body in the Garden, right? And it has to do with uh, doctors come on and they understand that your stomach. It's very similar to the garden. See what I mean? What microbes in your in your stomach is what helps you to to get your trace minerals. You can't eat rock dust, <laughs> right? So I've been doing this a long time, and trust me, I can help you do it 100% organically. That's what it's all about. You want to get away from the chemicals in your life, right? You don't want to pollute yourself, and you want to eat the good food. If you don't eat your good the good food, then you you will not get to you you'll get sick, just like in the plant. Right? If you if you become trace mineral deficient, you're going to get sick. So I, I have an organic hotline that people can talk to me directly, but you have to be a member. I, I, if you're not a member, then I charge $100 an hour for a phone call consultation. Two, 215 hours just for my time if you want me to go visit you. Right? Uh, but as a member, there's not a penny. As members, I, get free, I do free house calls to a member. I do a free uh, online conversation to my members. After a while, it's going to go back to the regular price of $55. Uh, you get the book or $20, $20 for a, a digital membership. So I think that's going to be basically the show for today. I got a little bit more time uh, uh, here in the show. Uh, please go to my web, uh, to my YouTube page. If you need to talk to me, uh, you want to call me up, 310-457-4438. Talk to me and send me an email, Andy Lopez at invisiblegardener.com. Just spell gardener, G A R D E N E R dot com, right? Uh, and then I'm happy to talk to you and, and see what's going on with your your garden, with your plants, and your vegetables. Uh, so that's what I'm here for. Uh, I, uh, uh, don't forget that uh, uh, I, uh, I'm doing uh, another show coming up called Cosmic Spaceship, and it's, uh, I write music. I do special healing music. I, the, the music. The music is actually called inner gardening, and I really make the music for the plants and the and the and the soil. Uh, but people really enjoy it too because it helps their bodies. Uh, it's all about healing. In certain frequencies. Uh, that's what I use a wide wide variety of frequencies. So enjoy. I also do the artwork. Uh, my phone number is there. I have a cell number. You can call me 805-612-7321 or 310-457-4438, which is my landline. I'm also uh, getting a bunch of different uh, items coming out. One of the things, we have a contest every month. Uh, so this this month, the winner is going to get uh, my Don't Panic, It's Organic coffee mug. It says Don't Panic, It's Organic. You can see right there. That's to be the winner. The way you enter the contest is through the newsletter. You get the newsletter by being a member. Okay, simple as that. That's that. You get that. You get a newsletter on a regular basis. It says click here to enter the contest. Uh, my book. It's a. I told you about the color version of it. Here's some pictures of uh, that's in the book. Okay, this is done by Cindy Berry, my daughter-in-law. Wonderful. It has about ten or twenty pictures there. That's why the book is fifty-five. The color version is fifty-five dollars because it costs a lot more to print in color. But the, what I would do is buy the color version and the black and white version, right? And use the black and white version all the time and take good care of the color version because it's a very rare book. Okay, you, you don't buy it in the stores anymore. You only get it from me. So that's it for today, folks. Uh, please stay tuned to. Uh, you know how to get to my cosmic gardening, cosmic spaceship. Uh, show um, and I'll be back here again next week. Uh, so if you need to talk to me, uh, you can always feel free to to, to call me up. Uh, you can you can uh, e email me. However it takes to get together, and I'm happy to be here. So take care. Uh, remember, don't panic. It's organic. Take care now. We'll see you next week. Bye. Take care now. That was uh, artwork done by my daughter-in-law again. She's really, really good artist. Take care now. Bye.